Hey Econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to Macroeconomics Unit 2, Practice Multiple Choice Questions. Now, you already got the ultimate review packet. You've watched the summary videos, you've watched the unit playlist videos, and you fill this thing out, you understand the concepts, now it's time to practice it to see if you're ready for your final exam for the AP exam. This video is gonna include 11 multiple choice questions covering things like GDP and unemployment. The second video is gonna cover things like inflation, CPI, and the GDP deflator. I'm gonna give you one minute to answer two or three multiple choice questions. If you need more time, just pause the video. Also, if you need more help, click on the Learn More icon. After the question, I'm going to go over the answers, see if you actually get in, okay? Good luck. Okay, question number one, which of the following is true for the gross domestic product, GDP? Remember, GDP is the dollar value of all final goods and services produced in a country's border in one year. The right answer is E. Yeah, E. GDP adjusted for inflation measures economic growth over time. Now let's quickly go over the wrong answers to find out why they were wrong. For A, intermediate goods are not counted because GDP does not include imports from other countries. Well, that's true. Intermediate goods are not counted, but it has nothing to do with imports not being counted because imports do count towards GDP. They're counted as a negative. B, household production like home auto repair is counted. No, it's not. C, transfer payments are not included. That's true. Because government expenditures are not counted, that's not true. So government spending does count towards GDP, but not all of it, right? Spending on Social Security and other transfer payments don't count towards GDP. And then D, GDP includes the purchase of all, the sale of all goods and services. Not all goods and services, right? Intermediate goods don't count. Uh, the sale of um, used goods don't count, right? It has to be produced this year. So the right answer is E. Right, question number two, which of the following is clearly not included in the calculation of GDP for the United States? The right answer is C, a government payment to an individual on welfare. That's a transfer payment, doesn't count towards GDP. A was wrong because money that consumers spend on online purchases does count towards GDP. I mean, it depends on what you're buying, but when you buy things on Amazon and they're new and they're not intermediate good, that counts towards GDP. Uh, the income earned by public school teachers, that's wages, wages count towards the income approach towards GDP. D, a delivery truck purchased by American company, that's investment, so that counts. And a plane produced in the United States but sold in Mexico is an export for the United States, import for Mexico, so it down, counts towards the United States GDP. Question number three, the value of which of the following is counted in US GDP? The right answer is C. So salary bonus to investment baker is a wage. That's what they earn from doing some sort of work and that counts towards GDP. So the other ones that don't count, the wrong answers, foreign countries buying US treasury bills don't count towards GDP. That's a purchase of an asset that doesn't count. Transfer payments to uh, elderly, we already said those don't count towards GDP. Undeclared wages to an illegal immigrant doesn't count because it's not part of the legal economic framework of GDP. And then E, the change in the value of real estate doesn't count. So if your home prices go up, in value, that's just an asset. That's not actually changing what we're actually producing in a given year. Okay, for question number four, make sure you got this one right. 
When we talk about investment in this class, we're always talking about the same idea, business spending on capital goods. The answer was D on this one. It is never anything to do with stocks and bonds and your parents' retirement account, none of that stuff. So spending stocks and bonds doesn't count. Financial assets, that is not investment. It's investment in the real world, but not for this class, not for economics. Spending by a central bank on government securities, no. Change in private and business savings, no. Government policy stabilizes the economy, no. That's called fiscal and monetary policy. The answer was D, investment is always business spending, buying machines, tools, and factories to improve your business. For question number five, remember there's two different ways of calculating GDP. You can add up all the spending, called the spending approach, or you can add up all the income, the income approach. Now in this one, the income approach basically adds up all the wages, rent, interest, and profits. The answer was B was the right answer. Now A was correct if we were talking about the expenditures approach. If we're talking about the spending approach, then spending by consumers and businesses and governments in other countries is basically that concept, but it's not the right answer here. Changes in income after government distribution, no. The money generated through household production, remember household production doesn't count towards GDP, and investment in saving the private sector, no. The right answer, no doubt about it, income approach was B. For question number six, the right answer is E, the country is producing more output. Remember, if the real GDP increases, it means we're actually producing more stuff, and it's not just price level going up. So price level has increased, not necessarily, right? Notice if the real GDP goes up, you might think, well, prices definitely went up in that time. No, we could have produced more stuff and prices maybe fell a little bit for some weird reason. So if we produce more stuff but prices fell a little bit, we still have a bigger real GDP. So not A, the inflation rate was negative. No, has nothing to do with deflation. The real GDP per capita has increased. We don't know. I mean, we have no idea the population of the country. All we know is we're producing more stuff. And it's true. If Let's say population, you know, population quadrupled, but our real GDP only went up like 1%. You know, that's not particularly good, right? Your GDP per capita would be falling in that case, but we don't have any information about that, so that's not the right answer. And D, the country's net exports are positive. We don't know anything about trade. The right answer is E. Question seven is a definition question. What is a recession? Well, a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth or decreasing real GDP. The right answer was C. Uh, increasing unemployment happens with a recession, but that's not definition of a recession. Uh, and B, decrease in standard of living. That could be true. I mean, obviously in a recession, people's standards of living would fall. Uh, but yeah, that's not the definition. The right answer was C, no doubt about it. Okay, for question number eight, the labor force participation rate is the number of people who are participating in the labor force, right? And the unemployment rate stays the same. So if more people are out there wanting to go get a job, but unemployment rate stays exactly the same, that means the total number of jobs in the economy must have increased. The right answer here is B. Again, the reason why is because if the unemployment rate stays the same, it's 5% uh, and you know, double the number of people go out looking for a job, but if the unemployment rate stays at 5%, that means more people got those jobs. So none of the other makes 
makes sense. Less workers classified as part-time workers, A, no. Total number uh, decreased, no. Total number of jobs in the economy stay the same, no. You might have said D was the right answer because, well, unemployment rates stay the same. Yeah, the percent stay the same, but the number of people with a job must have increased. And then E, not all GDP will increase. Now, you might have said that, right? If there's more people working, then they're maybe producing more stuff. I don't know. It says nominal GDP. Maybe prices fell. If the prices fell, then the nominal GDP would actually be going down. So you're right. It is very true. Nominal GDP would likely increase if we have more people jumping the labor force and there's more jobs and unemployment rate stays the same. But that's not necessarily completely true, guaranteed with the question we're given. So E is not the right answer. The right answer, no doubt about it, is B. Question nine, structural unemployment, meaning the structure of the labor force has changed and certain jobs become obsolete or they're replaced by robots. Which is the right answer? D. Assembly line workers are replaced by robots right robots that's the right answer structural unemployment let's go over the other ones really quickly for a, a female worker leaves the labor force because wages are decreasing wages are falling but we don't have any information on why it's not because the that labor is obsolete so we have no information on here so a is not the right answer aircraft mechanics are laid off during a recession that's called cyclical unemployment so that's not it a restaurant worker quit the job to go back to school no that's not unemployment caused by a change in the labor force and the structure of it. Assembly line workers is the right answer. High school graduates have a hard time finding a high paying job. Maybe, I mean, they might not have the skills that they need coming out of high school, but that's not really the, the right answer for structural employment. The right answer, no doubt about it, is D. Okay, for 10, the right answer is the unemployment rate would decrease. The answer is D on this one. Now, this might sound weird. These are people who don't have a job, who discourage, like, ah, I'm going to give up looking for a job. You would think the unemployment rate would increase. But remember, those people are not going to be counted as part of the labor force. So when you're a discouraged worker and you're not looking for a job anymore, you're not counted. And if you're not counted, that means that you're not considered unemployed. So the actual unemployment rate would actually fall and it would look like more people have a job even though really that's not what's going on. Okay, for 11, the right answer is B. Now, some people think that the right answer might be A, but if you watch the videos, the summary videos, you know the right answer is definitely not A. Full employment is not when there's 0% unemployment and when there's no cyclical unemployment. Remember, there's always gonna be frictional and structural no matter what, and when you add that together, you get what's called the natural rate of unemployment, which we call full employment. So that's five, four to six percent in the United States, right? Five percent in the United States. Um, so the answer is B. Uh, it's not only frictional. Uh, it's a rightward shift in production possibilities curve. No, remember, unemployment is being on, or employment is being on the curve. So full employment is producing all the output you can with all the workers that are working, but not, you know, the ones who are between jobs, frictionally employed, and not the ones who've lost their job because robots replaced them. So. Full employment is just no cyclical unemployment. For E, full employment is not possible to, to st uh, structural employment. No, it is definitely possible. Now, I hope you did well on this quiz. If not, go back and rewatch the summary videos. Make sure you're actually understanding it. Also, try the next set of questions covering CPI, inflation, GDP deflator. There's seven more questions for the second multiple choice practice questions inside this unit. Don't go anywhere yet. Please, please, please subscribe to my channel and go get the ultimate review packet. It helps me pay the bills and continue to making these videos. Go get this. It's going to help you learn, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.